Hi everyone, welcome to Level Up, a show where we show you how to quickly and easily build cool solutions on Google Cloud Platform. My name is Jay. Joining us today, we have one of our solution architects, Anant. Thanks for having me, Jay. Thank you. So what are we going to see today? So what we see today is marketing scenarios. I talk with a lot of marketers. I come from an ad tech background. And what they want to do is actually deploy real-time experiments onto their websites, apps, or whatnot, and then see what the performance of those things are or what those experiments are in real time. They don't want to wait for it. Everyone wants instant results. And that's what, what we're going to focus on. I've built a solution to discuss on how can we actually build a system which processes these things in real time and gives them insights as fast as possible, not in minutes, not in days, but in seconds. Right, so that's extremely important. Why is that hard to do? So in most of the time, what happens is the problem statement lies in the way we do processing. There are systems available to get events in real time. There are systems available to show data in real time onto some visualization platform. The challenge is how do you process it? In typical scenarios, what you do is you take that data from a pub sub or any other message queue kind of a thing, do something on it, and put it onto a database. Now, when you put it onto a database, the biggest challenge we face is databases, traditional databases are not performant to do some specific kind of operations which marketing team really needs to do. Those kind of operations are, let's say, I want to find out how many people in my experiment, how many people in both my experiments, A and B, being exposed to, let's say, variant 5, variant 6, or whatnot. Right, so traditionally, we put this in the database. We would then set up our processing data pipeline afterwards. But as you said, people like to have that in real time. Yeah. So what's the solution? So the solution here is actually to build from scratch, not to use any traditional database, also not to use any ETL pipelines which are non-real time. What we are going to do today is start with PubSub, which is an event bus or a message bus, which takes all the real time events from whenever they are being generated. So let's take an example here, which we're gonna use for the entirety of your demo. We are gonna use or assume that we have a web application or a website which is generating all of these events and we are running experiments on that website. So first we have a PubSub which takes all the events from the website. Behind it, we have a data flow which is actually gonna process that events or process those events, generate any sort of metrics which we need to show the marketeer. And then, instead of putting that into a traditional database, we are going to put that into Redis, or memory store, which is our managed version of database. Now, why memory store? The reason for memory store is memory store, or Redis, allows me operations inbuilt, which can do all these kind of cardinality and set operations. I don't have to code for it. OK, so let me Go through that again. So you're going to have these events going into PubSub, a messaging bus. It's then going to go into Dataflow, which is going to provide a real-time streaming data pipeline, which will then go into Redis memory store. And then you'll actually be able to have a real-time dashboard that's sitting on top of that. Perfectly right. That's a very nice way to put it. Well, I'm excited. Let's take a look. To begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a PubSub topic so that my dummy application can actually emit events or send events to that dummy application. So I go here, click on the hamburger icon, go to PubSub and Topics. And here I have a very easy to use button, Create Topic. I'm going to name it Web Events just because I feel that the dummy application which I've built mimics a web application or a website. So I'm going to click Create Topic. It's going to create a PubSub topic onto which your website can then send events. Now that I have events coming in and my PubSub is created, I need to deploy a demo application or a dummy application which will actually generate these events. For that, I'm going to open Shell or Cloud Shell. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to now clone a repository. This repository is published on GitHub, and you can find the link below. What this repository has is three different applications. The first application is a log generator, which is a dummy application, which just creates events onto a PubSub. The second one is a processor, which basically processes that data and is a data flow application. And the third one is a dummy dashboard, which pulls this data from the database, or Redis, and creates nice looking graphs. The first step. 
is to clone the repository onto my cloud console. And I am cloning the repository here. The Cloud Shell gives me very nice, easy to use UI along with my shell. So here you can see that the application contains, or the repository contains three applications, dashboard, log generator, and processor. Let's look at the log generator first. It's a simple Python application. What it does is it takes parameters from you as a command line in terms of how many events do you want to do. Here it's an event count. So let's say you want to do a, just a burst of 100 events. It will create 100 events. If you don't give a parameter, it will just run infinitely. The name of the topic onto which you want to actually publish the events, and the third one is the name of the project where the topic is contained. After that, it just creates a PubSub API and calls uh, and sends that particular dummy event to PubSub and keeps printing it if you want or if you have enabled logging. So to actually begin my dummy application, what I need to do first is to create a Python virtual environment. The reason I'm creating a Python virtual environment is to ensure that my Python dependencies don't mix with the system Python and my application remains separate. The first thing I do is to actually create the Python virtual environment by creating VENV. I'm just going to name my virtual environment also VENV. How convenient. Now that my Python virtual environment is generated, I'm going to go into that Python virtual environment by sourcing into it. Cool. Now that I'm in a virtual environment, you can see that VENV written here. I'm going to actually get into that application code by going into the repository and going into the log gen. Now that I'm into that log generator application, I'm going to fire it up by a Python command. Python message generator, and I'm going to give it all the parameters which I need to do, which is the name of the topic, which in this case is web events, and name of the project, or project ID, which in this case is real-time dashboard demo. Oh, I forgot to create requirements or download requirements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call pip, and I'm going to say install all requirements from the requirements file. PIP is a handy tool which will actually download all the requirements for my application. Now that PIP has downloaded all the application requirements, I'm going to launch it again. And here it is, publishing events to Cloud PubSub. Now that we have the application which is generating these dummy messages onto PubSub, let's actually create a database which is going to hold all the analysis. So for that, I go back to the Cloud Console, go to Memory Store, and in Memory Store, I say Create Instance. When I say Create Instance, I'm going to first name the instance Redis 1. I just like numbers better than anything else. I'm going to choose a zone, which is Zone F, and I'm going to choose an instance tier, which is Standard. The benefit of using Standard tier is it allows me to create two instances, one in each different zone, just for high availability. Just in case one instance goes down, another instance in another zone is able to handle all the load, and my application doesn't have to really go down. Now that I have chosen standard instance or standard tier, I'm going to just click Create. This will actually create two instances in two different zones in high availability mode for my Redis. OK, uh, and how long does it usually take to create this cluster? This typically takes about five to six minutes. Hmm. Should we jump ahead? Yes, I do. OK, let's go. Oh. OK, Redis is up. Redis is up. So what we're going to do next is actually spin up my Spring application, which is going to demonstrate or create those graphs by reading from Redis. Great. So first, look at the application. So it's all here in the dashboard. And it's a Spring application. So it's Java. So yeah, it has a lot of folders and, and things like that. Yeah, the cool part about Cloud Shell is it automatically opens all those folders. And you can see the application here. We have a controller which is going to build all the metrics which, are, which the UI is going to then put on. So this is a controller which is going to read from Redis and put that onto an API, mm -hmm. which the front end is then going to read. So let's look at the front end. Front end is I have not created anything very fancy. This is a simple JavaScript. So I have a JavaScript which reads or has a configuration of all the metrics which needs to be shown. It uses Google Charts to actually show things. 
Okay. And we have a simple index.html which has divs to put all those graphs. Great. And the good thing is people can just download this. They don't need to recreate this at all. Yes. I mean, the simple application is ready for you on GitHub. Now, first thing to do here is go into my application properties and configure my Redis IP address. In this case, I'm not going to change because two things. I'm using a Cloud Shell where to run my application, and I'm going to do a SSH tunneling to get to my Redis because Redis is not externally available. There is not a lot of security built around Redis by default, and that is why it is always better to keep Redis within a private network and, if required, pull it out. But in most scenarios, you don't even need to pull it out because your application is actually going to be running either on a VM or on App Engine, which has access to Redis without exposing the Redis system. Okay, so Redis, private IP, you're going to have an SH tunnel from your locally running Java application in Cloud Shell yes. into Redis. But before I do that, I need to actually create a Bastion host because Cloud Shell is actually outside my project. So I'm going to now create a Bastion host as form of a Compute Engine instance. The Compute Engine instance doesn't need to be very powerful. It doesn't need to do a lot of processing in this scenario. It's just a, it's just a tunneling mechanism. So I'm just going to create a VM. I'm going to call it instance one. Numbers. Yes, numbers. It's easy to remember, you know. And I'm going to just click create. I don't need to actually put any HTTP traffic or HTTPS traffic because there's not going to be a web server running on it. I click create, and this is going to create my Bastion host. I'll just wait for a moment to act for the instance to actually spin up. It's pretty fast, usually. It doesn't take very, very long to spin up. Once it spins up, typically what happens is it's now actually booting up. So although it tells me a checkbox here, mm -hmm. the instance is booting up. So I'll give it a few seconds to actually boot up the Linux environment. Once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an SSH tunnel between that instance or through that instance to the Redis memory store. Right. To do that, I'm going to issue a cloud command, gcloud compute. And then I'm going to say SSH. That's what I actually want to do. SSH into that instance. I'm going to say instance, the name of the instance, in this case, instance one. See how easy it is to say number one. Provide the zone in which I created it. In this case, I created it in US Central 1F. And then I pass on all the tunneling parameters. Mm -hmm. So after double dash, now I'm going to pass the tunneling parameters, which is N. And this is actually creating the tunnel. The IP on uh, the port on which memory store works is 6379. So I'm going to actually map 6379. I need to actually go and look at the IP address of the Redis memory store server. I'm going to go back. And this is the private IP of the memory store. So I'm going to copy that out and put that in here. And close the tunnel by mapping it to the same port number, 6379. And if you do forget the port number, the port number is also available in the memory store in the Cloud Console. Yeah, just here. So it's as simple as that. 6379 is the default port, and I haven't changed it. But in case you have configured it differently, you can actually look at the port number on the UI. And see, there's this common error which comes up, which is bind cannot request address. And that is because our default Cloud Shell assumes IPv6, whereas we are actually working on IPv4. Okay. So what I need to do is actually tell SSH to use IPv4 by adding a flag minus 4. And this creates a tunnel. So my tunnel is ready. Now that we have the SSH tunnel set up, let's go ahead and deploy the Spring application, which is going to show me nice looking graphs. So for that, I'm going to create or open another shell and then I'll, once the shell is open, I'm going to get into my repository. And in that, I'm going to get into the application, which is named Dashboard. Once I'm in the Dashboard application, I'm going to actually run a Maven command to compile and deploy my Spring application, which is going to show me all the nice looking graphs. So I'm going to issue a Maven command, MVN Spring Boot, which tells that, hey, it's a Spring Boot application. And I'm going to tell Spring Boot to run my application. When I issue this command, what Maven is going to do is it's going to actually look at all the dependencies and download all the dependencies and their dependencies and so forth till it finds all dependencies. Once it has actually compiled everything, it's going to then run the application. In this case, you can see that the Spring application is now running. And 
serving on port 8080. So cool thing about Cloud Shell is it also gives me a command line or a view to that particular running application. I'm going to click this bar called Web Preview, and I'm going to say Preview on port 8080, on which my Spring application is actually running. So when I run this application, I'm supposed to see a nice shiny dashboard. And in this case, I see empty dashboard. What? Let's see, you've generated the events with your application. Those are going into yeah. PubSub, where you have a topic set up. That's true. Uh, you've got the Redis database. You've got a dashboard that sits on top of that Redis database. That is so true. Uh, what connects PubSub to the Redis database? Ah, I think I forgot the processing ETL pipeline on Dataflow. The Dataflow pipeline actually connects the PubSub events to my database so that it reads the messages from the events processes them, generates the metrics, and puts them into the database for the dashboard to actually show them up. Anant, I'm going to have to pause you there. We're all out of time for today's episode. Already, man? Already. If you've enjoyed this episode, please click subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. If you'd like any more information, there are links in the description below. Please forward this to your friends and join us next time on Level Up.